Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Project Hospital. Well, last time we finished off a few unfinished bits of the hospital, like these wards over here in cardiology, but then we ran into a little bit of a problem, and that problem is a lack of money. We just don't have the money coming in right now to finish off all the unfinished bits of the hospital, and there are quite a lot of unfinished bits of the hospital. I mean, right there, we're looking at four unfinished bits. These big empty rooms here should be home to lots of lovely operating lounges, but we just don't have the money to get them in right now. They're quite expensive. So with that in mind, we came up with a bit of a plan. And it's probably a terrible plan, but you know what? We're going to go for it. We are going to try to complete that objective there. The objective that we once thought completely ludicrous, that might well be our saviour. Successfully finished six epidemic events. We've done one out of those six. And last time we did try to get up to two out of six, but of course we miserably failed to complete an epidemic event that was thrown at us randomly by the game, which is a bit of a shame, but there we go. So we're going to try to do that. And if we do that, we get four hundred thousand dollars, which will set us up quite nicely indeed to tie up all the loose ends around the hospital, which would be wonderful. So we're going to try to do that very soon indeed. However, first up, we need to hire some more people to work over in one of these rooms here that we put in last time, because once again, I entirely forgot to hire some people. So it's that room there. It's one of the cardiography units which you imagine might be quite an important room in the cardiology department. So yes, I forgot to hire some people to work in here. So let's go and do that now, shall we? Let's go and get a day shift person and a night shift person. Who have we got that's any good? Um, okay, hang on. We want people that are good at cardiology and these people are not good at that. Hang on, can we click that and filter it? No, okay, right. Can we have some new people, please? Because the maximum cardiology value there we've got is 13%. That's not very good. It's got to be at least over 30, surely. Um, 40%, Christopher Walker, you can come in. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. You're hiding secrets from us. Oh, no, you're not coming in, Christopher Walker. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not very good. I mean, you're okay. You level up uh, quite quickly. And, oh, no, you've got dirty feet. That's the dirty feet one. Lisa Davis is okay. Loyal and very comforting but they're just not particularly good at the job. Okay, here we go. Another two and a half grand going on this. Can we please just find some good people? There we go. Where have you lot been? Right, reveal your... Go on, reveal your secrets. There we go. Are you joking, game? Are you actually joking? Right, okay. So these two, these two people here who are very good at cardiology, um, they're both depressed. And that's not a very good... That's not a very good trait at all to have because it brings all the department down and it's generally not very good even though it doesn't work like that in real life. Frank Baker, however is good at working in the day and you move around quickly, you might possibly be late. But do you know what? That's okay. We do have another cardiography unit around the place. So that's not so bad. So Frank, you can go in on the day shift and then I think we just saw there Thomas Wilson is also pretty good. So what's that? People person, you've got rest resistance and you're loyal. Yeah, you can come in as well on the night shift, which is wonderful. So there we go. Two new people on board. But of course, they're not going to remain known as Frank Baker and Thomas Wilson, because that's not how we work here. Of course, we're going to change their names, which means we need to go over to the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go. Two names have been spun into existence on the lovely Wheel of Names, and the Wheel of Names has done something very exciting. So on the day shift, we've got Flora, which is the name of somebody's dog. And then on the night shift, we've got Vera, which is the name of somebody's cat. So we've got cats and dogs over here, and they're called Flora and Vera, which just sounds wonderful. So there we go. Welcome aboard, Flora and Vera. You're now working over here in cardiology. So that's all very good. And now I think we have to go and do this. We discussed this at the end of the previous part. There's going to be a lot of nothing going on, really. I'm just going to fly through these really quickly. Just going to try and get these done as soon as possible. We're just going to cut to the end of each attempt and see whether it worked or it failed or whatever. And that's all we're going to do because we have seen many, many epidemic events. We've seen so many of them. We know what the deal is. We go see people being treated and we send them away. And we try to figure out what's wrong with them and then they get treated. And then there's sometimes an anxious wait at the end as they try to get the treatments in before the time runs out and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes we have to take a little bit of a guess and just hope that we pick the right kind of diagnosis diagnosis or whatever. So we know what the deal is. And to watch that five more times, that would take an awfully long time in terms of videos. That might be another, what, two or three entire videos of just watching me fumble around and try to guess the right things and hope that we're doing it okay. So I am just going to go and do that 
right now. It might take me a long time. So in real actual time, this could take ages, but in terms of what you're going to see, it's going to be relatively brief. So here we go. Let's trick it. In fact, no, not here we go. Hang on. One very important thing to check first. How many people do we have in the quarantine beds over here? So there are three beds free, five beds spare. Okay, so only one person in quarantine right now. David Martinez in with a spot of potentially Lyme disease. Oh, you're the person from the other... Ah, yeah, you're the person from the uh, sort of the epidemic event that we failed recently that also triggered an epidemic outbreak, which went really well. Um, yeah, we don't know that you've got Lyme disease. We're not entirely sure. In fact, you know what? Can we untick that? Because now you're back under the control of the doctors. They might be able to work out what's actually wrong with you, David Martinez. So you were part of an event. You're a case from an event. Um, I think we should be okay to trigger another one. I mean, our prestige is already down anyway. It's already on minus 10%. So if we do this, we do get some more people in through the doors, which at least gives us some more money coming in to maybe offset the uh, the prestige hit there, which is a bit of a shame. So there we go. Do you know what? Let's just trigger this now. We'll muddle through. It's all going to be fine, everybody. We've got, what, sort of, I don't know, eight more hours-ish with the day shift. And the night shift can come in as well. They're really good. So let's trigger this. Let's see what it is. So um, tourists returning from vacation have fallen ill while traveling home. Okay, so we are going to let the computer do all this because it's nice and easy when that happens. How many people have we got? Oh, many, many people. Okay, do you know what, computer? Off you pop. You go and sort this out. Um, oh, hang on. Right, possibly should sort that though. Um, yeah, Brooke Martinez had that kind of fever thing there, which looks like a... It's like a power button just there, which is a bit of a strange icon for that. Oh, because it, is it boutonnaise? Is that supposed to be a button, possibly? Okay, so we shall release you home. There you go. Um, yes, you can go to funeral services. Rest in peace, Brooke Martinez. Right, here we go. I'm going to settle back with my cup of tea, and we're going to hope that the computer can sort all this out. For hang on a minute, we need to go and code blue, everybody. So here we go. First attempt at doing an epidemic event. Let's see how we get on. Is it going to work or is it going to end in dismal, dismal failure? And we failed our first attempt at an epidemic event. Well done, good job, everybody. I mean, we did try our hardest. We got down to one person who we diagnosed, but we hadn't got time to treat. They kind of figured out that diagnosis relatively late, which was a bit of a shame. So it was quite close, but there we go. A five ground penalty and another hit to our prestige, which is a bit of a nuisance. So do you know what? We're just going to trigger another one of these until we get it working. It's flu season. Okay, so flu season comes around and we've got not quite as many people as we did have before, but here we go. Let's see if we can complete this one. Event successful. Well done, everybody. That's very good news indeed. We did complete that in very good time. We were way ahead of the time for that, so people did work very well. Good job, folks. So we get five grand, which is very lovely, and our prestige goes up a little bit, so I think now our prestige is still on minus 10% because previously we failed two events, didn't we? So they sort of stack up. So it would have been minus 20% from those two events. We've just successfully completed an event. So it's gone to minus 10%. So if we successfully complete another one, it'll then just be on 0%. And I think, hang on, let's have a quick check. None of those people there went into the infectious diseases department. Most of those people have left the hospital entirely. So we should be okay, I think, to trigger another one of these right now. Let's just keep them rolling in. We've got another four to do. So here we go. Do that again. A neighboring city's water supply has been contaminated, resulting in a major incident being de uh, declared in the region. Okay, right. Yes, please. Let's go and do that. Get that done. That's quite a lot of people. Here we go. Code blue. Are we going to succeed with this one? Okay, that went horribly, horribly wrong. Somebody, I think, got transported to another hospital because there were too many people in the trauma center. So that just went really, really wrong very quickly indeed. Oh dear. So the five grand has been taken away again and our prestige has now come back down to minus 20%. This is quite difficult. This is why we didn't show this in its entirety on the channel because we would have been here forever. Um, yeah, we don't need to look at the event anymore. That went all very wrong indeed. Um, okay, hang on. Now I imagine it's going to be really busy down here. It was a bed over here, I think it was, in the trauma centre. So I think maybe they came in via flashy light Nino machine and there weren't any beds in there. We did try and sort it out a little bit, but it just didn't have time. But there you go, never mind. So has that all kind of calmed down a bit now? It all looks sort of relatively quiet over here. So do you know what? Let's have another one. An accident in a university lab released some very dangerous pathogens. 
Oh, brilliant. All city hospitals should prepare their protective equipment and deal with new incoming patients very carefully. Oh, wonderful. What have you got in store for us this time, game? Okay, there's only five of them. There's only five, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy because these could be really hard things to diagnose as we have seen previously. So let's just blue light code, blue whatever, all of these, and let's have another go, shall we? And let's see if we can do a little bit of a better job this time. And this time round, they were successful. Well done, everybody. Good job. So five grand comes back to us. And I think because we have gone into a brand new day, our prestige is going up now by 10%, but that's only going to take effect tomorrow. So today's prestige is at 90%, which is okay, that's being boosted. But yesterday's prestige, which is affecting today's patient intake and insurance payments, was 79%, which isn't very good at all. So we're gonna try and keep this up. If we could get a lovely high prestige for tomorrow, that would be very good indeed, because today is struggling a little bit in terms of the intake and such like. So never mind. I mean, in terms of what they got over here, a couple of people with Marburg, somebody with bird flu, couple of people with the lovely pneumonic plague, very good. So they're now all locked away in the lovely sort of isolation rooms and I think we might need to let them get out of the isolation rooms hang on let's pop up and see so they've got yeah one two three four five there's only one bed spare there's only one isolation bed spare um oh also hang on Peter Jackson has uh, got a little bit of a problem getting into high dependency over in internal medicine Hang on a minute, you've got methanol poisoning. Um, okay, right, hang on, let me go and try and sort that out. That's just a thing that we have to go and deal with, hang on. Right, okay, dealt with that little problem, that's all been sorted out. And now I think what we do is move time on a great deal indeed until at least five of these six isolation beds are empty. We can't sort of do another epidemic event with only one isolation room empty because that's a little bit daft because if we do get some more people coming in with, you know, I don't know, COVID or Marburg or, you know, pneumonic plague or whatever, then that is going to be a bit of a problem. So for now, we need to move time on a good long while until these beds are nice and empty. Okay, we've had to wait almost an entire in-game day for all these beds to be cleared, and there's still one with somebody in. There's a bed down there. Who are you? Thomas Lee has got a bit of the typhoid fever, but that does leave five more beds free, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And there's no guarantee that they're going to be required. Sometimes people just have, you know, coughs and sneezes or whatever that can be dealt with in emergency. So it's, what, 830 in the morning, all the day shift are in, ready to go. Let's trigger another epidemic event, shall we? There we go. An outbreak of a highly dangerous disease. Okay, it sounds wonderful. That's, what's that? Eight people. That should be okay. That should be okay. Come on, please let us get up to four out of six events because this is taking quite a long time. But here we go. Right, let's go and co-blue these people and then we shall see if we succeed in this particular event. Okay, things are looking good. Another event completed successfully. We get 10 grand, which is very nice indeed. And we get another boost to our prestige, which is very welcome. So now we've completed four out of six epidemic events. And I think... We had somebody with Ebola. In fact, three people with Ebola. That's going to be highly contagious, isn't it? So they're going to be up here in these rooms. West Nile fever. Is that going to be in a quarantine room? No, I don't think it is. And then you had Lassa fever. Again, not in a quarantine room. So we've now got... How many beds? We've got three quarantine beds left. Is it worth triggering another one of those right now? Or do we wait until the morning again? I think it might be worth waiting until 8 o'clock in the morning. So the day shift can go home now and the night shift can come in. Hopefully these people will be okay by the morning. They can then go home, free up all the beds. That's going to be wonderful. Betty's doing some training. Go and do that again. Um, yeah, we'll wait until the morning, I think. So here we go. Let's just run time on until 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so it's gone past 8 o'clock and we do have three people still remaining in the isolation room. So three available, but three occupied. That's okay. That is a risk I'm willing to take. Let's trigger another one of these. An outbreak of a highly dangerous disease. Oh, good. It's not going to be a kind of bronchitis and a sniffles thing, is it? Um, okay, never mind. Right, how many have we got? Oh, quite a lot. Right, here we go. Code blue. And let's see how we get on with this one. Can we get up to five out of six? Please let us get up to five out of six. And we are able to complete it successfully. Hooray. Look at that. Three events completed successfully in a row. $15,000 coming our way. Now, that's really welcome 
Pokemon indeed, and our prestige has gone up by 10% again for the following day, which is all very good. Okay, so I think what we do now, we leave sort of the time ticking on a bit, yet people are collapsing all over the place. We'll leave time ticking on until 8 o'clock in the morning again, because that's when the day shift are in. There are more people on the day shift, I think, more people to go and do more stuff. So we'll run it through till 8 o'clock in the morning again on the next day, people getting bored of waiting. I think because we are constantly pouring people into the hospital because of events, the other people who are coming in is not sort of event people and are getting a little bit bored of waiting, but that's okay, it's all fine. Right, here we go. Run time on until 8 o'clock in the morning and we'll trigger what's going to hopefully be our final Away With You, Margaret Allison, trying to do an exciting thing. What's hopefully going to be our final epidemic event. Stop it, Margaret Foster, you're ruining the moment. Okay, it turns out Margaret Foster's really, really ruined the moment now because she's died. Sorry, Margaret Foster. Right, we're past 8 o'clock on day 120 and we've only got two two people in the quarantine room, so four of those are available. So I think this is it. Fingers crossed, everybody. Can we complete our sixth and final epidemic event? Please be kind to us, game. Oh, crikey, it's dangerous pathogens again. Okay, this had a, no, not many people involved in this, but they were quite contagious indeed. They had all sorts of horribly, really dangerous diseases. So let's just hope that we can get these people treated and that also we can contain them as well because we don't want to have another little kind of mini epidemic outbreak thing around the hospital because we have had one of those already. Oh, hang on. Look at that. Oh, yeah, somebody did die overnight. Margaret Foster, there you go. Yep, absolutely. Yes, you go and do the thing, whatever it was. Um, um, yeah, so here we go. Two people sort of uh, diagnosed already, which is good. So let's see how we do. Can we complete this event here and get ourselves $400,000? Fingers crossed, everybody. Okay, things are looking very good indeed. We only have one person left to treat, Jessica Gonzalez, and we know what's wrong with her. She's got dengue fever. We just need her to get treated for that. Now she's in bed, she's in the right place for it. Can we please give her whatever it is that you use to treat dengue fever? Supportive therapy. Okay, can we please go and give her some supportive therapy? I'm not quite sure why we haven't done that yet, because it seems like a very easy thing to do. Just go and say, there, there, everything's going to be okay, and that should be it. We've got a couple of hours left, so we should be okay. All eyes on you, Jessica Gonzalez. All eyes on you. So many people are collapsing today. My goodness me, it's a very collapsy kind of a day. Jessica Gonzalez, please, somebody go and give her some treatment, some lovely supportive therapy. Just give her that, for goodness sake, somebody. Here we go. <gasps> It's done. It is done. Four events completed in a row. $20,000 we get for that. Because, of course, that does escalate up. So you, are, you, know, you get quite a lot of money for completing events successfully in a row. So we get twenty grand for that, which is very welcome. And also, look, $400,000 in terms of a government grant. Right, pause time for a second. That is wonderful. We've now got... $657,669. That is absolutely amazing. What is the next goal for um for happy life? Have no untreated patients for eight days. Oh, very, very funny game. Okay, right. That might well be the last objective that we ever complete because that is it, yeah, we've seen this before we've never got anywhere near eight days on this one because that one's been there for ages for overcure and that's ten days. I mean, they would be both really good things. That's only $100,000. We just got $400,000 for doing lots of other stuff. Why is the reward for a higher objective less money? That seems a little bit weird, but okay. Um, Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that one. We're never going to do that one. I mean, we could potentially do that one day, but we're not going to because that's another three event things. That's going to be a bit of a bother. And that one there again is certainly achievable, but it's a bit of a faff and a bit of a fiddle. It's quite difficult. And also, you hardly get anything for that. And right now, we've got $657,000. And I think, very boringly, the first thing that we have to do with that is finally pay off our loan to the bank. We've had a big debt sort of owed to the bank for many days. I don't know what day we took out our first loan, but for, I would say, over 100 days possibly even more than that, we've owed the bank money. We've paid back some daily interest, but now no more. Here we go. Pay back $20,000. Away it goes. And let's pay back the final $20,000 of our loan to the bank. Boom. It's done. Thank you, bank. You've been wonderful. You've helped us through some tough times, but now we're okay. And we've got 
$617,000 now to play with, which is just wonderful. That's very exciting indeed. Now, I think what we could do is, do you know what? We started this video by saying, oh, look, we want to get some lovely operating lounges up and running over here. Why don't we just go and get that done? Because I think if we get those in, that's going to be it. That's going to be this entire floor complete. That's all done over there. That sorted here, little waiting room. All that's done, plenty of stretchers. Those rooms are sorted out with actual sort of people in them. That's all sorted out, plenty of beds. I think neurology is looking okay. We put loads of beds over there. That's all sorted, that's all done. It just needs the four sort of new operating lounges going in. So I think we can do that. We can definitely do that. Now, how are we gonna set these up? I'm not entirely sure. That one, hang on, we should be able to grab the ones from downstairs and put them there. So I think they should be more or less the same size because we sort of designed them that way, I think. So if we go to here, look, hang on, hang on, hang on, go back upstairs. Who do these belong to? They belong to, they both cardiology. Yeah, they're both cardiology. That one looks a bit smaller to me. It might just be the angle that we're looking at it. Yeah, I think it is just the angle because you can't see that sort of square fully. Okay, so if we just nip down here look and go to where are they i've lost them go to here so go to these operating lounges here copy those paste them upstairs that's two done that's yeah that's already two things sorted out right hang on let's go and do that shall we so grab that go yes please i will have that pop that up like that rotate rotate right if we put it just there look Everything goes in with the doors and everything else. It's wonderful. Boop that into existence. That's going to be a not small sum of money. Um, oh, crikey, it took a while to think about it. 41 grand that was. That's how expensive they are. But there we go. They're in. They're done. Um, the colours are a little bit all over the place, but I think as well we might have to go back and sort these out. So hang on, that's gone to general surgery. No, no, these are operating lounges for the lovely cardiology department. There we go. So two operating lounges there for cardiology, looking very good. And um, yeah, we might need to change the colours of things, look, because they've got sort of green stools and green computers and blue over there and such like. So let's just go and make these things. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, hang on, go to there. Let's go make these things red. As red as we can make them, that's not really the most vibrant shade of red be nicer if we could have more red going on but never mind um okay so we just change the colors around a bit i know it's not important really in the grand scheme of things it's not that important but i would like to get it done so here we go let's just go and change some colors around there we go many things made as red as we can get them so the stool is red that machine there's red the lamps have got red edges and that machine's got red handly bits and that's kind of it so there we go two operating lounges in that's quite nice who owns these who owns those two? I'm not quite sure. Hang on, let's go and have a little look. So that belongs to, are they both neurology? Neurology's got that one there. So we could possibly sort that one out by just sort of copying, whoa, that was a bit weird game, uh, by copying that one there and popping that in. Whose is that one? Is that neurology's as well, possibly? I think it might be because it's grey. I mean, it doesn't really matter who's, who owns the thing. That's completely irrelevant. It doesn't really make any difference at all because they shared them or they're shared rooms. Um, okay, do you know what? Let's get both those set up as well. Let me just go and fiddle about and get both of these in. And then that floor there will be complete. And that will be wonderful. That will be very exciting. Actually, I say it'll be complete. It'll be complete with what we've already got set up. We could do with maybe looking at getting some sort of helipad type thing over here. I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm going to knock down foundations or such like, which will require a little bit of kind of bodging around. So we'll see about that. Maybe get a helipad kind of thing over here and get people coming in via a helicopter, which would be very exciting. But hang on, let's get those two rooms set up first. Right, there we go. Two more operating lounges set up over here for neurology, but of course they're all shared, so it doesn't really matter who owns them particularly. So they're all in. That's very good. And even with that done, we've still got $533,000 left, which is just amazing stuff. So I think maybe now let's look over here and see if we can figure out how to get a helicopter in, because I think that would be quite an exciting thing. Get a helipad, have people kind of landing around here somewhere, and then they could take people through the hospital. I mean, it's a bit of a weird place for it. 
because the elevators are sort of not near any kind of emergency rooms or whatever. They'd kind of have to go down the floors. I mean, that elevator might be the best one. Hang on, if we go back down to the bottom, it's going to be that one. Uh, hang on, I've lost, I've lost the elevator. Where is it? Hang on, hang on. Which one was it? Up and up. Oh, no, I've hang on, did I rotate it right? I think I rotated it round. Inadvertently, I rotated the thing. Um, hang on, yeah, that one, look. That one, I think, might be quite useful. So go down a bit, and it's that one. Go down a bit again, and it's that one. So they'd have to get people from the Jellyflopter into here, and then run along that corridor and into the sort of trauma centre over there. Okay, that's not exactly nearby. There's a little way to go. It's not quite as brilliant as our wonderful kind of easy access trauma centre here, where you just can come in right through the door. It's amazing, but yeah, well, it's okay. It's okay. It's better not having a helicopter at all. So here we go. Let's see if we can figure out how to get a helicopter over here somehow. So we do have a great big load of nothing going on in this corner of the hospital here. So I think we get our lovely helipad set up over here. The only thing is I'm not quite sure how we go about that. If we go and try to get ourselves a helicopter for the relatively reasonable price of $86,999, because I would have thought an entire helicopter would have been more expensive than that. But there we go. It's a lovely budget cheap helicopter. If we try and put that down, the game says no, and the error just there says helicopter can't be placed underneath other floors, which makes perfect sense because this entire floor has been set up, it's got foundation in, and it's just waiting to be built on. However, if we go up here, look to the roof, and try and put a helicopter down, again the game says no, and the error says helicopter can only be placed on floors accessible by elevators. And of course this floor is absolutely not accessible by elevators, because we haven't poked one up onto the roof yet. So I think what we might have to do is, we might need to do some demolition work around here, take the foundation out, then put the helicopter and the associated helipad down, and then maybe build like a little kind of corridor arrangement type thing, so people can get out of the helicopter and then come straight into the hospital via a corridor and some doors and all that kind of stuff. I think that's maybe what we have to do. So there's an elevator there, and we could do with that being linked up with the rest of this over here. The only thing is, how are we going to do that exactly? Maybe, maybe what we could do is, we could have a little kind of bit coming down here. So maybe we kind of open this up, so have that nice and open, have the helipad over here, and have that bit just kind of linking up to this bit over here. That can all just be linked to the labs, that can be lab corridor. Hang on, I do have a bit of a plan for this. Hang on, go back to the labs. So, get the corridor, run that out like that looks. So that can now be a bit of lab corridor, and then bring that over sort of like that possibly, and then out at the front like that. Is that sort of sitting at the front of the elevator there? Yes, okay, so leave all that like that. So build that as a lovely corridor, and then we can have a couple of doors along here, say, and then we can have the helipad over there. They come out of the out of the helicopter with their patients, they come in through some doors over here, and then they can choose to go to that elevator there, that one there, or that one there. I think that might be how this is going to work. I'm not entirely sure. This could go horribly, horribly wrong. I have dropped a, uh, have dropped a save, a coward save, just in case things do kind of implode a bit. So I think what we have to do is we have to go to there, and go to here, and then we have to use the terrifying dynamite thing. That just, yeah, it's building walls. So that says dynamite everything, including foundations and room markers. Okay, so if we sort of get rid of that entire bit just there, if we just get rid of that, look, so the helicopter can come in and land around here somewhere, is that okay? Right, there we go. So that wall has now appeared because that is now outside. That's an outside bit now. So hang on, if we go up a bit, look, yeah, there's kind of a big hole in the roof. That is now the roof on this level. And I think maybe, just to make it a little bit easier for the helicopter to go and land, we could just get rid of that corner bit there as well. Okay, so now that's the roof, and it's accessible by elevators. So I think if we go to here, we should be able... Yes, there it is. We can put a helicopter in. Okay, this is quite exciting. All right, so if we drop that in... If we just pop a helicopter in, like that, hang on, is that in the middle between these sides here? So we can't put it there, because it's right sort of flush against the wall, and that's not very good. We kind of want it in the middle, really, so hang on. So if we put it there, so one, two, three, four, five away from the edge, and then one, two, three, four, four, yeah, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, that's kind of in the middle. Push it back a little bit, I think we can put it there. 
So if we pop that in, I notice a helicopter doesn't appear to have any blades sticking out of the roof. Should a helicopter not have kind of helicopter blades coming out of the roof? There's a little sort of hole where they should be. Maybe they'll appear when we put the helicopter down. I do not know. Right, so if we put that just there. Yeah, there you go. The helicopter blades have appeared. $87,000 down, but we've got a lovely helicopter. Now, at the moment, I'm not quite sure what would happen with this because they're going to land here and they can't do anything. They're just going to be stuck on the roof, which, of course, is not very good at all. So now I think we need to get this whole sort of corridor bit set up, which should be fine. It should be fairly straightforward to do. So hang on a minute. Hang on. Knock that wall down. Knock that wall down. Away with you walls. Right, and then drip a drop of that. And then draw that along like that and to there and along like that. And then we need to rotate it round a bit. And then we can draw that wall in and that wall and that wall. Okay, so that looks good. And then we can go and drip a drop the floor like so. Put that in like that. Put that along like that. Put that there like that. Okay. So now we've got a little kind of corridor bit linking where the helicopter's going to land. I was going to say park, but you land a helicopter. You don't park a helicopter, you land the helicopter. So it's going to link that up. And now we just need a few doors. That's all we need. Just put a few doors along here, maybe a couple of doors, just to make it a little bit easier for them to get out. So how about we have, I mean, what's going to be good? Double sliding doors. Oh yeah, they're good. They're good. They look very hospitally. They look very dramatic. Um, where can we put them though? So if we put them, if we put one there and then say one there, look, they can choose which ones to go through and they're kind of running parallel to that bit there, which looks quite nice. And then, yeah, they can come through those doors, whichever ones they feel, they can mix it up a little bit if they'd like to. Um, and then, yeah, they can just go to that elevator there, that one there, that one there, or wherever else they want to go. They can go anywhere, really. Doesn't really matter, but I think that's that's looking good. I think that sorted out the helicopter side of things. Okay, so I think, do you know what? Hang on, run time on a bit. Let's run time on. Is that going to do anything? Are we going to see that spring into life? Does that go and pick people up? Karen Wright isn't spring into life because Karen Wright appears to be a bit dead. Karen Wright, what happened? <laughs> um, you're not part of the... You're not part of an event, are you? No, okay. Um, oh dear, right. Do an autopsy. Apologies, Karen. Right. Oh, she had something very, very bad. Oh dear. An infectious disease type thing of some sort. Okay. Sorry, Karen. Right. I do apologise. Oh, and Elizabeth Allen's also collapsing. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's doing anything right now. I imagine at some point that will spring into life and we'll see it flying away or whatever. However, that's now in. So I think this floor is pretty much done. I know there's some like sort of gaps and things around the place, but yeah, we don't have to fill the whole thing in. We could do with maybe putting a wall across there because that is going to look a bit weird. We are going to do the side of the hospital at some point and that is going to look a bit weird. So for now, let's just put in a wall going across like that just to fill that up, I think. And then we might also need to do the same over here, possibly. So have a wall going along like that and then a wall coming along to connect that up there because then we can kind of decorate the outside of the hospital a bit because there's walls there now for us to decorate on. Right, okay. And I think this floor is now entirely done. I think this floor is looking pretty good. That's all sorted. This is all done. Cardiology is done. We've got people working and pressing the buttons on the machines. That's all sorted. They're all done now. Lots of lovely operating lounges. Got a bit of yeah, a few empty bits, but that's okay. That's not really a problem. That over there is looking good. I mean, it looks a little bit weird in that corner there. The beds are slightly wonkaloids, but whatever the case, it's all good. So that's that floor done. I think now we pop down a floor and see what we can do over here. There is quite a lot of room over there. There's a lot of room over there. I'm very tempted to just build a great big load of quarantine rooms over there. Just pop them into that corner. Just have a little door over here and say, yay, quarantine land can go over there. That's where they can all go and sort of live and hang out. Could go and do that. We should possibly get some more operating lounges set up over here as well. In fact, it looks like maybe we could copy that entire thing. We could just copy that and paste it over into here. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. Yeah, it's set up as one great big operating lounge at the minute. Who does that belong to exactly? Um, hang on, I'm not entirely sure how we find that out. Um, it belongs to... Uh, um, nobody's owning up to it. Nobody's claiming ownership of this. Who would like this? Oh, hang on, it's theirs, I think. Right, it's going to general surgery. 
I mean, maybe we could have a couple more. Who else is on this floor? Hang on. Who else have we got? I don't think infectious diseases have an operating lounge. They don't need one. Um, then we've got... Uh, hang on a minute. Which one's which now? We've got general surgery, which is down here. No, that's internal medicine. But they don't have one either. They don't have an operating lounge either. So who else on this floor? So infectious diseases. Then it's those guys. Then it's pathology and kind of you know, a lovely bit of admin in terms of our cafeteria type thing. Then we've got some radiology stuff in there. And then, and then yeah, then it's just internal. No, then it's general surgery. Oh, okay. Do you know what? We're just going to copy that straight over then. That's going to be nice and simple. Just copy that entire thing. They've got slightly different colour things. Just to mix it up a bit. That's okay. I'm fine with that. So if we grab all that and just go, yes, please, we'll have that. Pop that in like that. That's going to be fantastic. So drop that in. That will do everything. That's doing the floors and the walls and the machines and everything else. And also, it should zone it out too. So now... If we go and look at that, yes, it's all zoned out accurately. It's going to lovely general surgery. Okay, that's that done. So I think now general surgery, general surgery isn't complete. It's missing a few beds. I don't know if you can see where the beds might be going. <laughs> few beds missing. Oh, of course, we pilfered a few from here, didn't we? We, uh, I say pilfered, we borrowed a few beds. Um, hang on, can we, have, can we have green beds? Hang on a second. Can we have green beds? Go to there. Um, yes, we can. There we go. Hang on. Pick up that bed, change it to green, put it back. We can't do this with all the beds. I, I do find this a bit of a fiddle with this game. It'd be lovely if it was a little bit more flexible with items that are placed. It does get a little bit fussy when items are placed. It kind of goes, nope, you have to have it this way. But no, I want green beds or whatever. I don't think. Can we change the colour of those things on the wall? No, we can't. Uh, we'll change the colours of these beds. Where possible, we will change the bed colours. I know it's not overly important, but I quite like it. Right, so that didn't change the colour of the bed. Green bed, please. There we go. Right, so if we just get some more modern hospital beds. So pop them in. Yeah, so like that. Look, we'll do this one and then we'll just copy that. So we'll clone that across there and clone that down here and then complete that ward there. There we go. That's all finished off. Lots of lovely new beds going in, all in the right colour. And I've put a little kind of hand washing station over there in the corner as well, just in case the doctors and nurses need to wash their hands. They don't have to go really far away. They can do it over there. So there we go. That is that sorted. And now I think that is it for that department. So which one was that again? I forget. There's so many departments. That's that one. So general surgery, I think is done. I think that is now complete. So I think this floor is looking pretty good. That's all done. There are some things over here, actually. Yeah, we didn't do those rooms there. So they could do with being completed. And then possibly we need to hire some staff as well. Right, what rooms are these? This is internal medicine. And that is a cardiography unit. And that is a diagnostic unit. Okay, so we can't copy and paste anything into these because we haven't got anything that's the right shape. So, right, okay, let's just go and set these up nice and quick, shall we? So let's go and get ourselves a lovely diagnostic unit. I don't think anybody works in there. I think that's just a room where people get taken with their sort of, you know, attendant doctor or whatever, and they do some stuff, they do some diagnostics. This room here, however, will require some people to work in it. So let's go and get both of these set up, and then we'll hire some people. And there we go, two rooms up and running, ready to go. And of course, that room there does need a couple of people to go and work in it. So let's go and do that now before I forget. So let's get one person on the day shift, one person on the night shift. Who can we get on the day shift? Again, we want people that are good at cardiology. And again, we've not been given many people that are good at cardiology. Okay, can we please refresh that list? Here we go, at 35, 37, 32. Let's reveal your deepest, darkest secrets. Patricia Barkley, you're quite good. People, person, and you're comforting. You can come in. However, is there anybody else that might be better suited to a day shift or a night shift? Christopher Lee, crikey, Christopher Lee is better on the night shift. Fast learner, fresh parent, and a germaphobe. But we have put little sinks in there so they can wash their hands quite a lot if they'd like to. I think we get Patricia Barkley in on the day shift, 
and we get Christopher Lee in on the night shift. But of course, they're not going to remain as Patricia Barkley and Christopher Lee because we have to go over to the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go. Two more spins on the Wheel of Names. So working over here on the day shift, we've got Cool Breeze. And then on the night shift, we've got Uncle Robot. So welcome aboard you two. Lovely to have you here. So I think now that's that department finished off. I think now there's no gaps over here anymore. That's looking pretty good. Yep, they've all got beds, lots of beds over there. Everything is looking good over there. So I think now there's a bit of a gap over here, look. So we could indeed fill that with the little kind of uh, sort of quarantine room type things. We could fit quite a few in across here. Might be a bit fiddly to do. We have still got a great big pile of money left, which is very good. So we could get that done. And then down on this floor here, there's a little bit of work to do there, so fill that in. I think maybe use that as a bit of a sort of intensive care overspill ward, possibly, because it is getting very busy over there. So maybe change that around a bit. Over there's all done. That's all complete. That's all looking good. It's all looking pretty good. It's all looking pretty good. So apart from that bit there, not quite sure what we do with this here. I might possibly turn it... Do we need another pharmacy? There are people waiting in the pharmacy. I suppose we could get another little pharmacy set up down here, maybe. So people come along here and they can you know, put some chairs there, possibly backing onto those and have another little kind of pharmacy set up there. So you can go to that one or you can go to this one. And it's on this floor. It's kind of near the doors on the way out kind of thing. So you pick up your stuff and then you can go home. That might make sense. And that's kind of it. That is kind of it. And of course, the outside. We have to do the outside. That's critically, crucially important. And I've got a wonderful plan for the outside. Um, so yeah, we'll do this first. So we'll sort the inside out first. I think, yeah, maybe a pharmacy there wouldn't go amiss. That would be okay, I think. Do you know what? Let's get that done, sure. I said it now. We're going to make it happen. So let's just knock a few walls down. Take that down. So now people can actually get over here, which is good. And we're going to make it a different pharmacy. So it's going to be two individual pharmacies. And we'll get some more people working over here as well, which is very good. In fact, you know what? Rotate it round a bit so we can see what we're working with. And we can have windows. We can have lovely windows over there. That shall be very nice. Right, okay, hang on. Firstly, get the walls done. So that is the colour of the walls for the pharmacy. So drop that in like that. Oh, and then, of course, take out those walls again. Away with you, walls. So get rid of those. And then we shall go to the floor. We'll drip a drop of the floor. And we'll put that in like that. And then, yeah, we'll get some windows along here. Because we can. Because we haven't really got enough windows in the hospital. Let's have just some nice... Just going along like that. Just some nice, regular, clear windows. Like that, I think. That works quite well. That does look a little bit naff now. That plant doesn't really go very well there, does it? <laughs> There's a plant in the corridor. I didn't notice the plant in the corridor. Hang on. Let's move that there. Look, we'll push that over a bit. We're going to figure out how we're going to sort this out. Let's go to admin let's just zone that out as a pharmacy before i forget so a different pharmacy might take a bit of the pressure off of that one as well particularly during the day so that could be quite a good idea um right okay let's set up a pharmacy then so we need some chairs could back some chairs onto there a little bit i think we've got a plant already ready to go in that room which is good so uh, here we go yeah let's get some chairs in look so some lovely modern benches again they are the wrong color I think now we're too far gone. Look, we can't change those ones. We'll make these red, look. You can have lovely red sort of seats over here. Um, can we have the fancy chairs? We could have fancy chairs. We could have lots of lovely fancy chairs going on in this pharmacy. I'd quite like that. I do like the fancy chairs. So all we need is a few chairs dotted around. Some of those things there where people can go and pick up stuff if they want, but they don't do that. They never go to those. We could have that. We could have them. Do you know what? We could have all that across that one wall. And then we could just have a row of chairs sort of along here, possibly. Uh, not there. That's not where I wanted the chairs. Hang on. Go back to here. Go and get the chairs. So fancy chairs. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A bit like that, look. And then across that wall there, we could have just a variety of different kind of shelving things. Let's make them a nice shade of pink, shall we? Why not? So we could put some across there. So two smaller ones. And then... A couple like that. And then tall... Ah, okay. Right, I see. So they're going like that, are they? So how about then we move that round? So we put that one there. Take that one out. Put that one like that. And that big one at the end. 
So that's where you can go and get your own sort of things that aren't prescribed. And then we just need the whole counter thing set up again. And then the things at the back. So we'll just put all those things at the back. Look, that's fine. Because money. We've got plenty of money to do that. And then we just need some counter bits and bobs. Have they got anything written on the counters? Um, prescription. What does that say? Prescription drop off. And then advice. Okay, that's fine. Right, we'll just we'll just sort that out. Let's just drop some kind of things over here where the workers can go and sit. Right, there we go. That's all set up. So now we've got a place for the pharmacists to sit and they can go and get the things they need from behind them. I think maybe what we could do is we could get a few more people in here, I think. If we just drag those back a little bit, just push them a bit nearer to the wall. And that's okay, because if you're sitting here, you can look out of the windows and look at the exciting flashy lights Nino machines. We should then, I think be able, hang on a minute, to get some more fancy chairs in. So we can have a bit like that. Oh no, we can't put them there though, because they're a bit too close. Um, okay, maybe that's not going to work. We do need quite a lot of places for people to sit, because this does get really, really busy. There are four chairs there. Let's not forget those four there. So we could, could rearrange these slightly differently. So don't put them there, look, because that's a bit too near. So okay, could we put it sort of a bit like that maybe so have them sort of like that that might work okay yeah that might work actually this should be okay and then if we put oh no then it's right then you're right next to the thing <laughs> joe what well, that's fun that's gonna hang on we can push them more that way you can have a nice chat with the people on those chairs it's going to be fine right so put that in like that this is this is a long time building a pharmacy right hang on so do that get some more fancy chairs so one and two one and two lovely right okay do you know what we do need around here we need that plant so bring the plant in the plant no not there the plant can go just there in a red pot thank you so much and then just some posters just some nice posters I think might go go quite well in here. So can we have a poster about blood donors? Pop that to the middle between those windows. Maybe one about accidents over there. That might be okay. Oh, and then a pharmacy thing. Yes, we need the pharmacy cross thing sticking out to show that also this is a pharmacy just here as well. Yeah, okay. Right, so another pharmacy setup using up that space down there. Um, so now I think, yeah, it's all ready to go, isn't it? Got the walls in and the floor and everything else. So now all we need to do is go and hire some people to work here. So let's see who's going to work in our pharmacy. Let's have a quick look, shall we? Pharmacy 13, 11, 33 isn't too bad and 12. In fact, Michael Baker's quite good, but you're better on the night shift. You're a night owl. How have we got night shift people over here? Only one. Okay, so do you know what? Let's get our one night shift person over here. And that can be Michael Baker. So welcome in and no more hidden secrets going on. So you can come into there, Michael Baker. And then we do need a couple of people on the day shift. These people are all pretty terrible at working in a pharmacy. Can we please get some better pharmacy people? There we go. 40s, 34, 36. They're all hiding deep, dark secrets from us. Please reveal your secrets. Okay. You, William Hernandez, you're okay. Pharmacy, 34%. We'll have you. Casey Allen. Oh, Casey Allen's got some good traits, but only a pharmacy skill of 11%. You're a people person, but you're a hedonist and also a germaphobe. And that might be a little bit awkward if you want to wash your hands around here because there is nowhere for you to go and wash your hands. Okay, we'll get William Hernandez in. You can come in on the day shift, but you do need another person helping you out on the day shift. Um, it's a good job we have a massive pile of money to go and do this, isn't it? Let's go and refresh the list again. Can we get some more decent people in? Um, you're okay. Oh, no, no, you're not okay. You're slow. Okay, maybe not you. You work better in the day. Oh, your farm is only 8%. Hang on. Reveal the secrets down here. Jessica Taylor. Ah, botherations. Germaphobe and loyal. Okay, is germaphobe going to be that bad? Possibly it might be. Do you know what? Refresh the list again. Come on, come on. We've got to have some good people going on. 37%. That's good. 38% is also quite good. Fresh parent and resistance. They do live a little bit far away, so it might often be late, but there is somebody else also on the same shift at the same time, so they can cover anything until they arrive. Um, but it might be worth... Okay, hang on. Reveal your secrets. Oh, crikey. Okay, definitely not you. An unpleasant germaphobe alcoholic who lives far away. Not ideal, Nancy Moore. Let's go for Lisa Rodriguez, shall we? 
So there we go, three more people. Welcome aboard, everybody. But of course, they're not going to remain as these names here. We know that's the case. So over we go again to the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go, three more spins on the Wheel of Names. So who's going to be working here in the new pharmacy? On the day shift, we've got Theo, which I'm fairly certain was the name of somebody's cat. So welcome, Theo. And then also on the day shift, we've got Cat K-Pop. So a clear cat theme going on. And then on the night shift, we've got Ghostly Lurker just lurking down in the pharmacy at night time. There we go. So welcome aboard you three. Lovely to have you here. So that sorted that little bit out over there. That's all very good. Then I think we need to go and do this over here. And that will require a little bit of repurposing because we're going to change it to be an overflow for the intensive care unit. Right, there we go. Three extra beds for intensive care. I mean, it's not that many beds, but it's a significant amount more than they do have. Oh, hang on. Hang on, we can change the colours of these beds as well. Hang on a second, this is very exciting. We're not going to get them all done, I don't think. But we can at least change as many as we can to the right colour. Because, yeah, they're all blue beds. And they look okay, but now we've got lots of red beds in. The blue ones do sort of stick out a little bit now. So, there we go. How many have we got that are still blue? That one there and that one there. Only two more. I think they're all red, aren't they? Yeah, they're okay. But yeah, only three beds in there. It's not that big a room, but that's better than no beds at all. And it does get quite busy down here. So having a little bit of extra space over there is going to be quite helpful. There's all the kit they need, various machines and thingamabobs, all the defibrillators on the wall and equipment in that cupboard and a little place to wash their hands if they need to. So that is that done. And I think that's the entire ground floor now complete. I'm fairly certain the ground floor is now done. There's nothing empty on the ground floor. I don't think we've got any kind of wards with beds missing or whatever. They've all got proper amounts of beds in and such like. That's okay. The gift shop's got multiple people working here. Got labs over there. I mean, is it done? I'm fairly certain it's done. It looks done to me. Okay, so that's that done. So really, the only big bit of unfinished hospital now is over here. There's a great big load of nothingness over there. I mean, we don't have to fill it with anything. We don't have to do anything with it. We could potentially put some more isolation things in. But again, we don't need to do that. It's not important that we do that right now because we're okay with the amount we've got. We've still got, what have we got now? One, two spare beds right now. And yeah, it's been quite busy. We have had quite a lot of epidemic events going on and we've still got two spare beds in the isolation room. So it's okay. But would it do any harm to just maybe have a few more over here, possibly? They're a bit fiddly to set up. So, I mean, it would be lovely if we could. Could we just sort of copy that entire setup and kind of drop it over here, possibly? That'd be quite good if we could just sort of copy that bit there. Not the slightly bigger room, because that's a little bit wonkaloids. But just sort of copy up to there, look. Copy that and then put it over there. And then, I don't know, fill this gap with something else. Can we have a look at doing that? That might be quite good. Press the right button. It might help, of course. Right, so go to there. Grab this. So can we go like that? Hang on. So get all that selected. So that'll copy all of that stuff. Rotate it round. So that's going to come back to there. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap. There's going to be a little bit of a gap. And I think it's going to put the walls and such like in. But then, I think as well... We might be able to copy a few more over there next to these ones. So we could get quite a lot of isolation ward things in. Or we could just put them there and just leave that bit of the hospital just doing nothing at all. It seems a shame to waste the space. I mean, the floor above's got quite a lot of wasted space. It's not so bad, I suppose. Um, I mean, what do we do with that? What do we do with that? Okay, do you know what? We're going to put them there. We're going to drop that in like that. That's going to be quite expensive. I don't think they're cheap things. How much was that? Um, 37 grand. We are absolutely burning our way through that money, aren't we? Right, so we can't fit another set of these rooms in, which is a little bit of a shame. But what we could do is we could just copy a few of them. We could just grab, say, these ones here, look. So we could just grab a couple more, put them like that. So we've got, what, five more new quarantine rooms. That's got to be a good thing. We have to sort out the corridor bit because you know, people find it a bit tricky to get over there. And then we could go to our infectious diseases and then we could have the corridor sort of coming up here because it works quite well. Look, the corridor can come up here, which is quite good. It can go around there like that. In here, we'll just put some extra stretches and things. And then over here, um, I don't know what we can have here. Do you know what? We'll just we'll run a corridor like that. We'll put a corridor down like that. 
and then we'll just let's have some I don't know, some seats and some windows so the people in infectious diseases can go over here and have a nice look out of a window or something that might be quite fun for them if they've been locked away they can have a nice sit down over there so that's what we could do I think that might be what we get up to. So, right, hang on, a little bit of work required on getting the walls in and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get rid of that wall there and build some more walls around here and all that kind of stuff. So let's just go and get that sorted and put the flooring in, all that sort of stuff. Right, there we go. Walls are in, floors are in. It looks much better. So I think now let's get some stretches over there, shall we? Go and put some stretches in. So hang on a minute. Which of these offices has the stretchers? Fairly certain it's that one. Right, so stretchers. And I think we'll have that kind of grey looking kind of stretcher because it matches the department. So hang on a minute, rotate it around a little bit. Pop it like that. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll have a couple of wheelchairs. Again, the colours don't really sort of uh, don't really help there with matching it up to this department. So we just have a couple of uh, plain white wheelchairs. There we go. And then this bit along here, I would like to just have lots of seats just lots and lots of seats and some plants and some bins and then people can just come and sit here and look out the window that's my plan i would quite like that i mean it's a bit weird and it probably isn't the best use of our space but it's a nice place for people to go and have a little bit of a sit down they can sit in the corridor and look out of the window at whatever's over in this direction the great abyss of nothing so i think that's what we do let's get a load of benches and things set up over here so people can have a nice look out of the window there we go some very lovely benches and some plants and some bins and then right at the end of the corridor i've put in a few vending machines that vend the terrible terrible vended tea and also some coffee as well if you feel like it and then a kind of snack machine bit of water and then a bin over there as well so the only thing left i think to do over here is to now put some windows in because at the moment those people are going to stare at that wall forever and that's a bit miserable so do we want to put in the great big viewing windows like this i think that might look quite good so hang on let's make sure we do it properly so we want it to sort of start where those benches are where the seats are sorry so like that and then kind of to there so if we just put in a huge amount of windows like this then if you are suffering from some sort of terrible quarantine virus type thing, you can sort of come out here and your family can stand down here. You can wave at them through the window or whatever. There we go. So a great big huge viewing area just here where people can look out over the aforementioned abyss. Right, I think, I think that's it. I don't think there is anything left for us to do in terms of building projects any kind of bits we haven't finished or things we need to kind of complete or add on or add more beds towards or whatever i think we're all done let's go and have a quick final check now i think that's it i think we've completed everything in the hospital there are no kind of great big empty areas that we know shouldn't be empty i mean over here look there is a big load of empty nothingness but we know that's supposed to be like that we haven't put anything over there in fact we built a wall along there just to kind of give us a wall to decorate the outside with and the same over here as well not quite as big a space but again we know it's supposed to be empty it's not your know, ward missing beds or an empty room or whatever so there we go i think we're done i think that is entirely done that's quite exciting the inside of the hospital is now complete which is very wonderful which means we need to turn our attention to the outside of the hospital because my goodness me the outside of the hospital does need a little bit of work if we actually go back to there look we can see that it's hardly decorated if i put the walls up because that will help quite a bit i think this side might be decorated and it looks good i like that i like the kind of pattern with it but yeah the rest of the hospital is definitely not decorated at all and it looks very drab and very boring and very sad so now the big job is going to be sorting this out this could take absolutely ages i could be here forever doing this I've got to decorate the entire hospital's walls on all of the levels i could be here for ages now the big question is the big question is how are we going to do it do we alternate it so we've got to decorate all those walls do we have kind of blue like that so this floor's got blue do we have yellow above that and then blue above that or do we just keep the blue going up in a great big kind of pattern i think maybe we alternate it to make it look very exciting however got to finish the ground floor first so let's go back to here go to walls grab that wall there please and i think it's just four bits isn't it i think we're doing four bits so four like that um yeah fairly certain it was four yeah so four sections so one two three ooh, four missed that bit there and then a bit of a gap and then one two three four oh goodness me right okay <laughs> one two three right hang on uh one two three four uh one two three four i'll be back in a bit 
I'll be back in a while because this could take some time. This is going to take a very long time indeed to get all of this sorted. So uh, it's going to be out once the ground floor is done, it'll be fine because then we can just sort of copy what's on the ground floor and swap it around. But it's the uh, so it's the counting bit here that could be the um, the time consuming bit. So there we go. That's a gap for right. Hang on. Let me go and finish this off. Hang on a second. And there we go. It is done. It was quite a laborious process to go and put all the different wall bits on the outside, but we got there in the end. And you know what? It's worth it because that looks magnificent. A hospital entirely decked out in lovely geek cupboard corporate colours. That looks very good. Look at that. And it's all the way around the outside. On all the floors, all the floors have got the pattern on. It looks wonderful. Even around the back of the hospital, though, if somebody does go for a walk along here, look, they can see the patterns over here too, which is all very good indeed. Now, of course, we're not quite done yet with the outside. As good as that looks, we do have a lot of empty space around the place. So what can we do with this? Because think over here and outside stuff there, look, there are loads of these outdoor objects that we just don't have. And a lot of them we're not interested in. We don't want some of them. We don't want like street lamps and roof ventilation and things like that. We don't want any of that. Roof satellites, not really overly bothered. So outside bins probably wouldn't go amiss. But where can we put these things? Like to what degree can we put these things? We can put them definitely right next to the hospital. And we can put them, it looks like, entirely out on the pavements. So we can block the entire sort of path to the hospital. We don't really want to do that, but we do have a lot of options over here. There are many things that we can put outside the hospital. However, I think you might know what I'm thinking about this because I am thinking plants. We've got lots of plants inside the hospital. Pretty much every single room has a lovely plant in it. It was part of our sort of corporate strategy to make every room a little bit better with a lovely plant. So why don't we just cover the outside in lots of lovely plants. There are flower pots there of all sorts of different colours. So we could potentially just sort of do a little area of these. We could, let's say, hang on, let's let's play with this, shall we? So we have a blue one there and a blue one there and a blue one there and a blue one there, look. And then put a yellow one, hang on, blue and yellow, geek of a corporate colours. And then in the middle, we could have something else like a little fountain. Okay, $500 for that fountain. Really? Really game? That doesn't look like $500 worth of fountain, but okie doke. So I quite like that. That looks quite nice. And then we could have like an outdoor bench possibly. So you could sit down on the bench, look. And then we could have some stuff behind that. And then we could just sort of copy that and put it over here and just sort of copy that around the outside. So many, many plants with lovely fountains. We do need something behind here. So we could have a little bin. That actually, you know, hang on, hang on. Could we somehow rejig this a bit? So like that look, and then have a little bin. And then, can we copy that? Can we copy that? And then can we put that sort of, um, oh bother, okay, well hang on. We can't have it there, okay, it's too near the bench. So we can put that there with a chunk of wall. We don't want the chunk of wall game. <laughs> we don't want the bit of wall. No, 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 away with the wall, but I like that. Little kind of seating areas outside with with like a bin and a fountain and some lovely flowers. Okay, that looks quite nice. The only thing is, there's quite a lot of outside to do. There is a great deal of outside to cover. And it's going to, there's sort of just street lights in the way and all sorts of things. It's going to take a long time to get that sorted. It's going to take ages to put things along the outside. I'm very tempted to just go, do you know what, plant pots, let's put loads of plant pots around. That bit is lovely, I do like that. Um, I mean, could we, hang on, could we copy sort of that arrangement like that? And then could we put that there? Do not change my wall colours game. Oh, you've changed my wall colours. <laughs> game, game, why are you doing this to me? Hang on a minute, give me the yellow wall, put that there. Give me the blue wall, oh, game. Theory me. Okay, hang on. that needs to go in there. There we go. It's four and four each time. Right, so a little kind of seating area with some lovely flowers. But um, yeah, it'll take it'll take forever. It'll take so long to put that around the entire outside. So I'm thinking, do we just put down loads and loads of flowers? I mean, what else is there? There's I mean there's some trees, I suppose they're sort of okay, but I like the I like the little plants more. I like these more. There are some tall flowers we could put down. Do you know what? Let's just go for the flower pot, shall we? Let's go for the flower pots. I mean, if we could, um, yeah, well, what do we do? I mean, yeah, we could just do this look. But again, it's going to take a long time to get these all the way around the edge of the hospital. <laughs> the hospital is quite big. 
It's quite a big structure and the camera keeps flinging itself off into the middle of nowhere. So I mean, yeah, this might take a while to do, but I think it will be worth it in the long run because it does look good. It'll make it look really pretty. And I mean, we're going to have to hire a very dedicated either team of gardeners or a really, really good solo gardener because there's going to be a lot of plants for them to go and sort out. But yeah, if we just drop all these around, just make it look nice, because, you know, got plants inside the hospital, lots of plants on the inside. Um, we'll go and um, we'll go and sort out uh, lots of plants on the outside as well. But um, yeah, hang on. This is going to take an incredibly long time to get this done, particularly if the camera keeps flying off into the middle of nowhere like that. But here we go. Right, hang on. Let's go and apply lots of lovely, lovely plants in pots outside. Oh, crikey. Right, there we go. There are flower pots around the entire outside of the hospital. Look at that all the way along. It took a long time to get that done. It took many, many clicks of the mouse. We must have put down, what, around 200 flower pots. They go all the way around. However, the last little bit I would like to do in terms of the outside of the hospital is over here at the front because the front is very important. This is where a lot of people come in and you'll go to the reception and book into emergency and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you're okay. There is a little bit of a door down here. We could do with maybe making this a little bit more exciting. Let's put some actual flower pots down because we do have some of those elsewhere. So we'll have one of them like that and one of them like that. So people using that door, it looks a little bit nicer. It looks quite nice. So that's quite pretty. But you know what? Let's put some tall flowers out as well, shall we? There we go, just with the alternating colours. And then there's a door over here, but that door's got the lovely things around it, so you can have a nice break out there. That's quite pretty. And then the other door, I mean, yeah, the other door's that one, but we're not going to block access to that one. Although, although, would it hurt to have some lovely flower pots outside here? I don't think it would. I don't think it would at all. Let's get, maybe get a bit like that look. That looks quite nice. So as you're being kind of carted in on your stretcher in an emergency situation, you can look around and go, oh no, where am I? Oh, I'm at this hospital. Love this one. It's got lovely flowers. Brilliant. I'm going to be fine. There we go. But this bit here is, it's quite boring, isn't it? It's quite boring and quite bland. So can we do something with this? So I think, I mean, if we put a lovely flower pot there, that looks good, like a little wooden flower pot thing. And then can we just put, I mean, what have we got in the middle there? Could we put a tree? I'm not, I'm not really feeling that. I'm not loving the tree. I'm not loving the tree. Uh, can we have a tree like that? I don't think we can. It can't be placed that close to walls, it says. So we definitely can't have that. Um, can we have a young tree? Okay, we could have a couple of... Let's have a tree like that, look. That's, that's nice. A lovely sort of young tree just growing. And then could we get some more flowers around the edge? I would like a little bench where people could sit down if they wanted to. So how about like that, look. Sit like that and then get, hang on, blue flower pot and a blue flower pot. So a bit like that and then one there and one there and then get yellow flower pots. So put them in like that and then a yellow one there and a yellow one there and then around the edge just to mix it up a little bit. We'll have a yellow kind of actual sort of planter type thing and one there like that. And one there like that. There we go. Lots of lovely plants everywhere. Many, many plants. And I think that'll do. I think that will do for the outside. I do quite like that. Oh, hang on, maybe an outside bin. It looks a bit... Do you know what? It's important though. You know, tidiness is very important. So there we go. Outside bin. Just tucked away around the corner a bit. Kind of disguised by the plants. So you don't see it. So there we go. There we go. Lovely. I think that looks good. I like that. So the outside of the hospital is done. I mean, we could properly go to town on it if we wanted to and put even more sort of uh, plant pot things in, but I would be here forever doing that. And um, just imagine, just imagine there are more plant pots, just lining up everything, just out into the streets, all the plants everywhere, just so many lovely plant pots spilling out of the hospital. But there we go. So that is that done. So I think one of our final things that we have to do now is make sure that we use up every single name that's left on the wheel of names. We're leaving no names behind. So hang on, let me have a quick check. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more people that we need to go and hire. So let's go and have a quick look around and see where we could go and hire some more people. Okay, it looks like we have a couple of vacancies for nurses down here in emergency. That could be quite good. So let's get some people in who would like to join us on the day shift. Um, hang on. Patient care zero percent. I mean, I am no nurse myself, but surely you need a little bit more than patient care zero percent. 
<laughs> I mean, the mouse I'm using to point at this has got a patient care of 0%. So is the tree outside my window. That's not anything, Patricia Thomas. Um, I think all those people are pretty rubbish. Let's refresh that list. I mean, 36% is okay. Let's reveal your secrets. You're an alcoholic. Right, refresh that, please. 25%. You could be quite good on the night shift. You like washing your hands, but again, that's no bad thing. Um, okay, Margaret Young. You come in on the night shift, please. And then on the day shift... Um, oh, Judy Scott. Right, please don't have a terrible hidden tray. Okay, you like a bit of food. Do you know what? That's absolutely fine. There you go. You can join in. Um, do we want you to do all the things? I mean, really, could we just have you... Actually, could we have you doing trauma stabilisation? That could be your jobs. Go and stabilise people who are in trauma. That is your one and only job. Please go and sort that out. So dedicated people over there. However, they're not going to remain as Judy, Scott and Margaret Young. We know that to be the case. So let's go over to the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go. Another couple of spins on the Wheel of Names. And we are able to welcome Stripey Sharma onto the day shift as a nurse over here. And on the night shift, we welcome Yoshi or Yoshi, depending on how you want to say that. I'm not quite sure. I would say Yoshi, but some people say Yoshi. And that is the name of somebody's dog. So there there we go. Another couple of names. So now we're left with, what was it? 11. So we've got nine left, I think. Is that right? Four, five, six. Nine names. That is all we have. Right. What other departments could benefit from a couple of extra people working in them? It looks like we do have some vacancies over here in infectious diseases. So two nurses on the night shift and one nurse on the day shift. And they would be quite handy because as we've seen, infectious diseases does get quite busy. It's quite a busy old department going on. And you want to make sure that if there are people who should be quarantined, that you quarantine them very quickly indeed. And of course, more staff will help out with that. So I think, yeah, we'll get these in because I don't really want to just throw anybody anywhere. I want to make sure that we are putting people into good places and I think that will help out quite a bit. So let's see who we've got over here, who would like to join us. Um, okay, well, you could be quite good. You could be quite good. Hang on. Reveal your secrets. No, you're not good. Right, none of these people are any good. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're not so bad. You've got dirty feet, but you give the nice staff modifier, your rest levels decrease faster, and you don't take free time breaks. You're going to be completely dead on your feet by the end of your shift. Okay, refresh that list. Reveal your secrets. Okay, Lisa Miller, you can come in on the day shift. Yes, absolutely. And then two night shift people. Um, Sarah Clark, you're good at working at night. Absolutely, that's perfect. And one more night shift person. I mean, you're unpleasant. Nancy Young just isn't that good at the job. But we could give them a chance. We could give them a chance. Or in fact, hang on. Nancy Young, we could use you as just on patient transfers. We could just put you dedicated to doing patient transfers. That might be quite good, actually. That could be quite useful. So don't go and look after the patients. You can just sort of, you know, poodle people about. Because that's quite important over here. Sometimes time is of the essence in infectious diseases. And if we've got you around doing the moving of patients, that could help out quite a bit. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. We're on 313 staff. We can only have 400 maximum. We're almost at the, well, not almost at the limit, but yeah, we're getting toward that limit. Okay, right, so three more people to name, three more spins on the Wheel of Names coming up. Right, there we go, three more names have been spun by the Wheel of Names, so let's go and see who's joining us. On the day shift, we've got Lyra, which is the name of somebody's dog, I'm fairly certain it said. And then on the night shift, we've got Shiro, which again, I think is the name of somebody's dog, and also Kira Cat which I imagine might be the name of somebody's cat, or they're just called Kira Cat, I don't know. But again, we've got lots of lovely names coming in now, pet names and everything. So there you go. Welcome aboard, Shiro, Lyra, and Kira Cat. It's wonderful to have you lot on board. So now we've only got six more names to spin on the wheel of names. Where can we go next for our remaining people? Over here in cardiology, we've got an entirely empty doctor room. That's not very good, is it? We need to get somebody into there. So maybe... We get a person on the night shift to cover that role and then a person on the day shift to cover this. I don't think we need three people covering the day shift and the night shift because they're not that busy at night. But maybe having two people on the night shift because it's medium busyness there for that office. So get somebody else in on the night shift and then another person on the day shift and that might help out quite a bit in cardiology. That could be quite good. So here we go. Who'd like to join over here? So back to some doctors. Um, Richard Johnson. You could be quite good. Hang on, let's reveal your deepest, darkest secrets. Oh, you two are both quite, you two are both quite similar, look. You're both good at night and you both like a bit of food. Maybe you two could get together and have a nice chat about things. Uh, maybe we put Richard Johnson in on the night shift 
to pop you into there, Richard Johnson. And then somebody on the day shift. Uh, you've got dirty feet, Christopher Miller. Your skills are okay there. General Medicine 58, Cardiology 62. You're a bit better, but you're an alcoholic, which is no good. 60%, 60%. You're actually not too bad. Hang on, what's your hidden secret? Um, you're a good boss. Okay, we could get Jordan Lewis in. They are quite good, and they don't have a negative thing. But I suppose, hang on, who's better? Christopher, 62, 58, you've got 60 and 60. Okay, you're kind of, hang on. Diagnosis is better. Uh, advanced diagnosis is better for Christopher Miller. I think we might go for Christopher Miller. He's a people person, and he's a hard worker. He does have dirty feet, which is a little bit of a shame, but there we go, that can't be helped. So we'll get you on board, I think. So there we go, so now in cardiology, we've got three doctors on on the day shift and two on the night shift. So that should keep things ticking over okay over there. Of course, now we have to go name them, so back we go once again to the wheel of names. Right, there we go, two more names spun on the wheel of names. Let's go and see who we've got. So on the day shift, we've got Nina, which is the name of somebody's cat. And on the night shift, we've got EZB or EZB. EZB, EZB, however you want to say that, but I believe that is the nickname given to somebody's child, which is very good. So there we go. Welcome EZB, EZB, or ESB, possibly. I didn't try that one. It might be ESB. I don't know, but that name there, and also Nina, welcome aboard. So that's good. We're down to what? Four names left now on the wheel of names, I think it is. Yeah, four names, just sort of looking down to check there. That's good. That's very good. So where else is going to benefit from some extra staff? Hang on a second. We've got a very similar situation here in neurology to what we just saw in cardiology. We've got two people on the day shift, one person on the night shift, and then an entirely empty, unused doctor room over there with nobody working in it at all. That seems a little bit strange. However, the workload on the night shift is low over here in neurology. So I think we keep the one person working on the night shift and then we just get one more person working on the day shift. Because, yeah, if their workload is low at night, they're okay. They're able to cope with what's going on. So if we just get one more person working on the day shift, that could be quite helpful. So here we go. Let's get another doctor in, shall we? Um, okay, neurology is going to be key. You are very good. You do live a little bit far away, and you do have another thing as well. Hang on. Let's reveal your hidden thingamajig. Um, you are a people person. Okay, that could be quite good. Casey Green, you've got yourself a job. Welcome aboard. It's lovely to have you here. But of course, you're not going to remain as Casey Green. It's policy for us to change your names when you join the hospital. So here we go. Let's go for another quick spin on the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go. The Wheel of Names has done its wonderful work once again. And we're able to welcome Jim Boo to the day shift over here in neurology. Hi, Jim Boo. And Jim Boo is the name of somebody's child, which is wonderful. I imagine it's a nickname they give them. I mean, it could be that. Their proper name. Jimbo is a very exciting name. I imagine it's more of a nickname. And also the same person that requested Jimbo be added to the wheel of names also requested EZB, EZB, ESB, that person down there. So maybe Jimbo and EZB, EZB, ESB, that person down there are related in some way. I do not know. But there we go. Welcome Jimbo. So now you're over here in neurology, which is good. And now we've only got three more names to spin into existence on the wheel of names. I mean, we could get possibly another janitor that might help out quite a bit how is it looking over here is everything looking nice and tidy hang on go back to the regular regular walls everything looks quite tidy everything looks very organized and very clean little bit kind of dirty around there possibly little bit of a mess around there i mean is it worth just putting together a very quick kind of janitor cupboard thing over here and they could clean up in fact yeah look it is a bit of a mess over here look there's some mess there, there's a bit of mess there. It's because the janitor for radiology, I imagine, is based quite far away. So I don't come up here that often. Possibly we need to throw together a very quick little kind of janitor closet thing over here and then hire a janitor. I think just one. Just one day shift janitor, I think, should do the job. So there, let's go and do that. Let's get that done. Let's just put that together nice and quick and go and hire a person. Right, there we go. Quick cleaning closet thrown together. Nothing too exciting because there's not too much that has to go in them. But yeah, it's okay. It's got a plant in it. Very important. So let's go and hire one person, shall we? Let's get one person hired over here to just do a spot of cleaning. And I think when they do actually clean this up, if there's nothing else for them to do, they will go and help out just cleaning around everywhere else. So it is worthwhile getting another person in. So here here we go. Let's get a day shift cleaner going on. And who's going to be quite good? You're okay. Oh, hang on. You move quickly. That's good. Oh, but you, 
you work well during the day, and you don't take free time breaks, and also you're not hiding any secrets from us. Oh, but you work really quickly. You move quickly, but you're better overall, Patricia Barkley. Okay, do you know what? We will have you. You can join us on the day shift, you can do a spot of cleaning, and make everything look wonderful. You guys are the unsung heroes, really. If it wasn't for the janitors, this place would be a complete absolute pigsty. It'd be awful, it'd be horrendous, there'd be blood and mess and everything else all over the place and footprints and puddles. It would be revolting, it would be completely unhygienic and horrible, and it would just be a disaster. So, I mean, really, yes, it's not the glamour job, it's not like, you know, the doctors and such like, which is all very sort of fancy pants, but the janitors are the unsung heroes of this entire hospital, because without them, it just wouldn't work at all. So, welcome aboard, Patricia Barkley, but of course, we're not going to let you keep that name, we're going to make you change it to something else, so here we go over to the Wheel of Names. So, courtesy of the Wheel of Names, we welcome Bjorn to the cleaning staff over here in Radiology, Welcome Bjorn, how are you? Hope you're okay. So there we go, that's another name drawn, which means now we only have two names left on the wheel of names. So let's go and see where we can get two final jobs in the hospital, which will get us up to 319 hired employees. And of all of those, 315, when we actually max that out with all the people that we need to name, 315 of those people will have been named from the Wheel of Names, which is very good indeed. But here we go, two more roles to go and find. Can we go and just employ a couple of extra people? Okay, looking at this, we don't seem to have that many people working in hospitalization up in the internal medicine department, which is quite a surprise because that is quite a big, busy department. A lot of people go there for treatment and I'm surprised they've muddled through with these staffing numbers. So on the day shift, we've got three doctors and four nurses and on the night shift, We've only got two doctors and two nurses. That's not very good, is it? That's not very many people at all. So I think what we could do is maybe we should get a couple of extra doctors in. Get a doctor on the day shift and a doctor on the night shift. I think that will help out quite a bit. And we have got space down here. Look, there is a little table ready there to house a doctor on the day shift and a doctor on the night shift. So let's get that done, shall we? This is going to be the final two hires of our Project Hospital series. So here we go. Let's click this and see who we can get. So internal medicine, 15%. 39% is okay. 7% is bad. Um, okay, Nancy Green, reveal your hidden secret. What is that? Practical diagnoses and resistance. Okay, do you know what, Nancy Green? You're okay. You're okay. Maybe we put you in on the night shift because the night shift isn't quite as busy. So you pop in on the night shift and then on the day shift, can we refresh that list, please? This is what we're looking for. Look, 82%, 86%. Right, reveal your secrets. Margaret White. It's Margaret White. We need Margaret White. In fact, Thomas Cole is also very, very good. But we uh, we employed Nancy Green there. Um, Margaret White, you can come in. Resistance, diagnostic genius, you're comforting. Oh my goodness me, you're very good. You're very good. Yeah, Margaret White, you can come in. Welcome aboard. And that's it. We've hired our final person. So our final staff count is 319 people. We've got a hospital with 319 people working here. That is a lot of people. And now also that does mean that we've got to go and spin the final two names from the Wheel of Names. And this is it. This is the end. There are two names left. We've got two people to name. There's going to be no more spins of the Wheel of Names after this. So here we go. Let's see who these two people are going to become courtesy of the Wheel of Names final spins. And there we go. It is done. The Wheel of Names has spun the final two names into existence. So let's see who we've got. Who are the final two people to join us here in our wonderful hospital on the day shift? We welcome Yukari Murasaki. Hello, Yukari Murasaki. And on the night shift here in Internal Medicine, we welcome Beans. And Beans is a name of somebody's cat. And that's it. That is it. The Wheel of Names is done. It is bereft of names. And it's not going to have any more names added to it. It is now done. It's finished. It's done its job. And do you know what? Let's give the Wheel of Names a little tiny round of applause, shall we? Well done, Wheel of Names. Because it has done a grand job. It spun 350 names into our hospital. That's very impressive. So well done, Wheel of Names. And I think it did work quite well. I thought it was quite a fun little thing. Just, you know, make sure that people could join in the series and be part of the hospital and all that kind of stuff. But I did not think at all that we'd get anywhere near 315 names. That's a lot of names put forward. I mean, some of the names were 
slightly bizarre, and some of the names were you know, more sort of traditional. Some were pet names, we've got cats and dogs and various other bits, we've got children's names in there, it's all very exciting. There are so many names, and I'm very grateful for everybody that put a name forward, because you know, it wouldn't have worked if you had not put any names forward. I would have just had to make up all sorts of random nonsense names, which probably would have been okay, would have muddled through, but it's more fun having you lot out there, you lovely people suggesting names, and then seeing yourselves pop up in the hospital, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, 350 names from the Wheel of Names itself, and of course the only four that we didn't take from the Wheel of Names were Betty and Bernard, we hired them not too long ago, and then from the very beginning of the series we've got Dr. Penge Cupboard and Dr. Dave Wee Hours, and that's kind of it, they're the only four people that we didn't spin on the Wheel of Names. So if you did put a name forward for the Wheel of Names, then thank you very much indeed. I'm very, very grateful that you joined in and made the series a little bit more fun and silly. Just, you know, having everyone's names in was quite enjoyable. I think. So thank you very much again if you did put a name or two or three or five or whatever forward because yeah I'm very grateful. It did make a huge difference to the series and I think it just you know, added an extra sort of little splash of interactivity there and a bit of excitement as well. You saw if a name was going to come up or if you were going to appear in the series that time, if you're going to be a doctor doing something or whatever. So it was very good. So there you go. Thank you again if you put some names forward. But now it's time for the Wheel of Names to have a little bit of a rest. You go and have a lie down Wheel of Names. You've done a grand, grand job indeed. And I think that was our very final action here in Project Hospital. Make sure that the Wheel of Names was empty because we didn't want to leave a name behind. We're not going to leave a name behind at all. But with that done, I think we can now wrap things up. We've done everything we wanted to do here in the hospital. It's all done. It's all sorted. Everything's finished. We've completed all the rooms. We've hired all the people. We've decorated the outside. It looks magnificent. Hang on, get the walls back up. Got a few floors as well. Come on, let's see the full glorious magnificence of the walls and the flowers. That looks very good. I do like that. We've got a little kind of helicopter landing pad type thing over here. I think that's it. It's all done. We have nothing else to do here in our hospital. We can wrap things up. But my goodness me, it's been very, very exciting this time around. We've done a load of things and it's taken us quite a long time and also quite a lot of money. Look at that. At one point, we did have, what, $650,000 or something. We're down to $156,000. We spent an awful lot of money this time around on getting everything sorted out because we have you know, bought lots of things, lots of operating lounges. That thing there wasn't cheap. That didn't come cheap at all. All of these plants weren't cheap. I mean, they're cheap individually, but when you multiply them by however many we've got, 200 or whatever, they were quite expensive. So we've spent a huge amount of money that we had to go and get right at the start of this part, didn't we? We had to go and complete that objective, complete the epidemic events and get the money because without that, we would not have been able to do any of this stuff. So it was a little bit difficult to do as we saw, but we got there in the end. We've used up all the names on the Wheel of Names and that's it. We are done. We are finished. Project Hospital is done. And here is our wonderful, wonderful hospital. It does look good. I mean, okay, it possibly isn't the most organized of hospitals. I mean, it's not too bad. I don't think it's a complete disaster. It's sort of, you know, it looks okay. There is logic to it. You know, kind of, everything's in different areas. Got our sort of cardio bit here and neurology here and all that kind of stuff. It's sort of okay. It's sort of, you know, vaguely logically arranged, but there are some slight oddities to it. I mean, there's labs just kind of dotted around the place. There is a bit of radiology just kind of thrown into that corner there, which is a slightly strange thing. We do have that weird kind of um, viewing corridor type thing over here, which was a little bit of a little bit of a desperate measure just to use that space up. But you know what? Some people might quite like it. We haven't got proper doors over to the quarantine bits in uh, infectious diseases, but that's okay. But you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It is working. People are happy here, it seems. It's making money. And I quite like it. I'm quite proud of this. I think it's worked out very, very well indeed. We've got many flashy lights, Nino machines. We have to go and say bye-bye to the flashy lights, Nino machines. Farewell, flashy lights, Nino machines. It's been wonderful seeing you driving about and doing a flashy lighty Nino ring. It's been very exciting. There's the front. It looks very nice now. Little benches to sit on and trees and such like. But yeah, this is it. This is it. This is the end of Project Hospital. It's been really good. I've really enjoyed this. I've learned a great deal of things about your various medical terms and medical procedures and things. And thank you to everybody who's joined in with this because you might have noticed that 
Some things in this game were not entirely obvious to me, and through the comments, people have really helped out quite a lot. Lots of people have pointed things out and sort of steered me in the right direction so we didn't get things entirely wrong quite a lot of time. So thank you very much if you did help out in whatever small or large part. Thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful, wonderful series. And again, if you did put a name forward for the Wheel of Names and you've ended up in the hospital, then thank you very much indeed as well, because yeah, without you, the, the hospital, I don't think, would have been quite as fun. I think it would have been a little bit more generic, but now it's a hospital full of lovely people, and I do quite like that. I think that's very wonderful, so thank you again. We have one final big important thing to go and check, I think. Let's go and find ourselves a lovely staff room. Hang on, drop the walls back down again. I would like to find a staff room. Oh good, there we go, this is perfect. I wanted to check at the very last moment that Kite Club was still a thing. And if we just run time on the tiniest bit, ah, oh, phew, people are still attending Kite Club. That is very good. They were talking about kites not too long ago. Um, okay, you're gonna go. You're still talking about kites, just yelling it into the room to whoever will listen. I mean, yeah, who are you just there? So Flip Wizard McGee, the names are amazing. I mean, we wouldn't have had these names if it wasn't for you lovely people out there. So Flip Wizard McGee yelling about kites to Bill Snively and everything Trish over there, which is very good. Let's go and check another staff room. Hang on, um, where is another staff room? Let's go and find one. Um, hang on, there was one up on this floor, wasn't there? Where we first saw Kite Club. It was over here, I think. Hang on. They are... They need to be sitting down to talk about Kite Club, I think. They're just... They're just all standing up. Why are you standing up? Why are you sitting down enjoying your lovely cafeteria snacks? There's, I put loads of tables over here with lots of lovely multicolored chairs. Right, are people going to come in here or not? Um, are you going in here? No. Okay, never mind. I'd like to see if people talk about Kite Club up here as well. So hang on, you're getting a drink. Oh no, just a quick coffee drink was that. And then um, and then straight back out to work. I just want to check that people are still talking about Kite Club. Because that was one of the big things that came out of this series. Hang on, you go in here. And yes, look. Oh, it's perfect. Yep, indeed. Kite Club is still a thing. Thank goodness for that. So there we go. As well as building this huge big hospital and saving goodness knows how many lives and treating so many people, we've also got a new little thing, which is Kite Club. Our staff have got together and they've united, they've bonded over their love of kites, which is completely unexpected, but also completely wonderful. So there we go. Farewell, hospital. It's been wonderful. It's been brilliant. But I think now we have to say farewell because yeah, we've done everything we can do. We've built all the departments. We've done as many of these as I can sort of reasonably hope to achieve, I think. We could possibly get some more objectives. We could go and do that one, but yeah, it's not going to make too much difference. We've built everything there is to build. We've decorated everything there is to decorate. We've hired everybody there is to hire. And I think with that done, we finish things up for now with Project Hospital. So farewell, hospital. With a heavy heart, we must leave you behind. Also, there's some blood there. Can we get a janitor over to that, please? <laughs> there's some blood right at the reception desk that is not good for first impressions hopefully they can be distracted by the lovely flowers out here unless they've got hay fever which might possibly be a little bit of a problem didn't kind of think about that it'll be fine it'll all be fine so there we go oh hang on that's probably not good news a long wait for the morgue table <laughs> I'm sure it's just busy up there. It's just busy up there. It's going to be fine. Um, yeah, okay. They'll sort that out. That was a bit of a downer, wasn't it? Ending it on somebody needing a morgue table. Um, I mean, yeah, there were a few deaths, but I think yeah, more people survived than died, which is positive. So here we go. Let's say farewell. Let's take one last quick look at our lovely hospital. Let's zoom out and have a look at it from as far away as we can go. I don't think we ever look at it from this zoom level, do we? Because you can't really see what's happening. But there we go. Farewell, hospital. Farewell, all the people in the hospital. You've all been magnificent. Thank you for helping out. One quick farewell going to, uh, yeah, they're still here. Going to, uh, yeah, doctors, uh, doctors Penge and Dave. The original doctors there. So farewell, Dr. Penge Cupboard. And see you later, Dr. Dave We Hours. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much for taking part as well. And now we shall finish things up. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and also the series as a whole as well. If you have, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in our wonderful hospital over these past 50 odd parts and also in the Geek Cupboard. And I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken.
<laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, it, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bozzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> Do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. Is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush. 